This video is brought to you with the support of TrueFire. Learn, practice, and play with TrueFire. Hi, this is Keith Whams. Welcome to 5 Watt World, where it's to help you get the most music from the least gear. There is no more important skill for a musician than listening. More important than your chops, and way more important than your gear, without solid listening skills, neither of those things will matter at all. So let's talk about how to listen and why. I've been thinking about this video for a couple of reasons. First, I was reading Kate Murphy's excellent book called You're Not Listening, which is sort of a regrettable title because the book is all about the benefits of listening and the recent research on the subject. And the second reason is that my script editor, Perry McManus, is often recommending new music to me that I've never heard of. This makes two things clear. Perry is always checking out and listening to new music, and I, I am not making the time to do that. I called my good friend, rock blues guitarist and teacher extraordinaire, Jeff McElane, and asked him for a good quote about listening as a musician. And after a few minutes, he said, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> How is it that there aren't famous quotes about listening from musicians that all of us can recite? I mean, listening is the whole point of making music, right? So if we agree that listening is important and that we aren't as good at it as we should be, let's look at five ways to listen as a musician that'll make a difference. Number one, being listened to makes you smarter. There have been different studies that concluded that listening to music makes you smarter. Back in the 90s, they thought it actually improved your IQ, but later they realized that the music had actually lowered the stress level of the test subjects, hence improving their scores. More recently, new medical imaging technology lets us look at what's happening in the brain, and we've learned that when someone is listening to us, we get smarter. We use additional parts of our brain if someone is listening to us, listening closely, and we can tell that they care about what we're saying. By watching which parts of the brain light up on the MRI, doctors have been able to see that when we feel that we're being heard, more parts of the brain are being used. We're getting smarter. Now, any musician that's done a live gig where you can feel like the audience wasn't listening has felt this. Like if you're phoning it in, they wouldn't have noticed at all. Versus when the crowd is clearly there for the music and is reacting to what's happening. And that feels amazing. Pianist Keith Jarrett has often been quoted as saying that his improvised performances would not have been possible without this specific audience on that specific day. He's done hundreds, maybe thousands of these performances in his career, and he seems to know what the scientists just got around to showing us that when the audience is really listening, he got smarter and gave a deeper, more meaningful performance. Number two, listening is more important than playing. Instructors are always reminding guitarists to work on their rhythm playing. And what do we work on? Our soloing. <laughs> Good teachers tell us this because we're gonna spend the vast majority of our time not soloing, but playing rhythm. And that's our real contribution to the music being played. But we're skipping over the fact that we should be listening at all times, whether we're playing rhythm or soloing, or just waiting for our turn to play. That we should always be listening. Listening is more important than playing. So always be listening when you're up there. Be a part of everything that's happening. Listen and ask yourself, what would make this better? Usually one of the good choices is to lay out, not play anything, and just listen. I reached out to TrueFire to be my sponsor because I've used them for years. With over 2 million users worldwide, whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced level player, TrueFire has lessons to enhance and inspire your playing. Get 35% off courses using the promo code 5 watt 35 Or like I do, sign up for the All Access Pass to use the entire TrueFire catalog. I really like TrueFire, and I think if you give them a shot, you'll like them too. Sign up now to start your journey to being a better guitarist. I'd like to thank TrueFire for their support in making this video. Number three hearing versus listening. In any talk about listening, one of the first things that comes up is focusing on the person talking and not about what you think you need to say in response. We all do this. We're trying to be engaged and if interesting things are being said, it pulls our brains in different directions. We don't want to lose that clever thing we just thought of to say when it comes to being our turn to talk. The problem here, of course, is that when we're cooking up our answer, we've probably stopped listening to what the person talking about is still trying to say. I go to a monthly acoustic jam session. As I'm not gigging right now, this is the only time I get to improvise live with other musicians. We go around the circle. Each of us calls a tune and we're then expected to sing that song and indicate to the others when they should improvise or when we might say then, pick a little something. Often we simply go around the room and folks can jump in if they want to. So it's going in a circle. 
So when the guy on my right is playing, I know I'm up next, and the stress level starts to rise from his first notes. I should be listening intently to what he's playing, but instead, I'm already hearing what I want to play over these changes in my head. Now I'll tell you that the most fun I have playing music is when I get to play with other people. I've said it here before, it's the reason I began playing guitar in the first place. But there I am, in that jam session, not listening, not being with the other people playing, not being in the moment, and again, not listening. So I'm working on that, and you can ask all the folks at the Song Circle how I'm doing. Number four, make time to listen to music. We should all be making more time to just sit and listen to music. I went digging for some ideas on ways to do this better because I feel I need to get back to listening to some music and taking the time myself, and these were the favorite ones I ran into. First off, try listening during your commute. Set aside rehearsing for that meeting in your head and listen to some music instead that will lower your stress level and or inspire you to go into that work in a better headspace. Listen before a big meeting to be inspired. I remember hearing that Lenny Kravitz listens to Miles Davis's Kinda Blue just before going on stage every night. When I had a weekly jazz gig, I'd often listen to the Pat Metheny Trio records while driving that last 30 minutes into Binghamton to play. I was both inspired and I was always kind of hoping that some of that vocabulary might sneak out of me on the gig. Or perhaps best of all, make a time of day when you just sit and listen to music. It doesn't have to be for long, maybe 10 or 15 minutes. I recently had an easy Sunday evening and one of the things that I did was put on Keith Jarrett's Colon Concerts. I meant to just listen to the first 16 minute piece, but before I knew it I was just saying to myself, well, maybe just one more, until the record ended. And you know, it was one of the best night's sleep I've had in weeks. Number five, which leads me to the final one. Listen to music that will expand your musical vocabulary. Poet Lucille Clifton said, we can't create something that we can't imagine. When I think of this quote, I always interpret it to mean you won't play something that you can't hear in your own head. To come back to my conversation with Jeff McElane, he says his students ask him all the time, how do I get more jazz stuff into my playing? You know, like the stuff that Robin Ford plays. The answer is simple. Robin plays that way because he has spent years listening to a wide variety of music, including lots of stuff that would seem to be outside at first glance. For an improviser to get my attention, they need to surprise me, and Ford often does this. He clearly listens to a lot of music that I have yet to put on my playlist, and I'm looking to change that. So when you're listening to interviews with your favorite players, make particular note of what their influences are, what they've been listening to that's led them to play the way they do. Seek out those listening lists like the gold they are, and listen to that music, and then listen to it again. And with that, thanks for listening until the end. I need to thank everyone that stopped by the store and grabbed a hoodie or a stomp preset pack, and in particular, I need to thank the friends of 5 Watt on Patreon. I appreciate you all finding your best way to support what I do here on 5 Watt World. Because we're all 5 Watt World. And I just make the videos. Until next time, I'm Keith Williams. Thanks for being a part of the 5 Watt World.